Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. It's been a while, but now I'm very excited to bring you a review for the new Netflix Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Spoiler Pack 3. This is, as the name suggests, the third and, as far as we know, final spoiler pack tied into Netflix's War for Cybertron cartoon. It follows the trend of being kind of a blind box thing, which includes some figures that they don't officially reveal, though typically by the time it's out we know what's in it. Uh, and then it also includes spoilers for the show written in your uh, ancient Autobot text. As I did with the last two spoiler packs, I'm going to treat the contents as a surprise, even though I know what's in it, just in case anyone watching hasn't had that spoiled for them and they want to see it here. So I'm not going to say anything uh, until we get it open and you can see for yourself. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toy's packaging, in this case, very intricate packaging. Then we'll open it up, we'll see the toys inside, find out what they are for some of us. We'll see the instructions, and then we'll see the figures themselves in both, you know, their alt mode, robot mode, whatever these mysterious figures may have. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So the spoiler pack comes in very much the same style of packaging as the other two. Uh, the first one was just like an Autobot-themed ammo case thing. The second one was Decepticon-themed. This one is kind of a blend of the two. It's got the lighter colors of the Autobot case, but it's got a Decepticon symbol on it. But you can also see there's this viney jungle motif going on, which is appropriate because the third and final season is based on Transformers Kingdom, which is a Beast Wars-themed mashup with the G1 characters. Uh, the show hasn't aired yet as of recording this. It's due to air, I think, the end of July. So it's still going to be a while before we know everything that's going on. So this is still technically a spoiler. But as you can see, we got you know, our typical branding here with the War for Cybertron logo, Netflix, Transformers, branding, all that fun stuff. Then on the top, you get like the handle with some more vines. You get a like kind of looks like chalked on Decepticon symbol, which is kind of neat. Here on the side, you get a not so subtle clue about what's inside this. Uh, you might be able to guess. <laughs> so, yeah, that may or may not be found inside. Big warning spoilers inside. You got this cool little bullet hole thing going on. You got what looks like Energon shining through there. And then you got kind of the front clip of the case where you would, you know, open it up. Speaking of opening up, let's go ahead and lift this top off. Whoop. And there's no spoilers written on the inside of the lid. All right. There are spoilers written here where the putty goes, because this, just like the other two, has the whole putty with the Energon cubes thing going on. Uh, so we'll get to these spoilers here in a moment. Let's just keep opening this up to look at the contents. So you would lift this piece out. It's just kind of a rectangle. Cardboard tray, and whoa, what could it be? Megatron, who saw that coming? So, if this looks very familiar, it should. This Megatron is nearly identical to the figure that was released in the first wave of Netflix toys. Um, personally, I find that very disappointing. I mean, they're selling the same toy twice in the same toy line. Um, the only differences that you can see with this guy they have new uh battle damage paint apps on the chest and then you can't really see it from here you see it a little bit but some of the red highlights have been changed to a like a light blue a baby blue which i think is supposed to signify like a matrix power up because you can see here he comes with this really neat little bandolier that houses the Matrix. Because uh, if you saw the end of Earthrise, which I'm assuming you have by now, so hopefully I don't spoil it, he manages to get the Matrix from Optimus Prime. So I guess at some point in the show he's going to strap it to his chest. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, I mean, it's very disappointing to have him be so very, very similar to what came just two ways prior in the same toy line. But at least it's, you know... In my opinion, the best version of Megatron, right? If they're going to redo them, might as well redo them in the best paint scheme. Um, of course, they have already announced a uh, premium finish version from Takara. 
So I don't know if I'll pick that up yet. I'm kind of on the fence. I don't really want another Siege Megatron because, yeah, we got this one. There's also the Shattered Glass coming, which is at least different enough to be cool. We'll, we'll see if I end up, you know, biting the bullet on that one. And now this guy right here looks like a clear purple Paleotrex, but this new character is named Skelivore. So, interesting name. Sounds like something you'd find on DeviantArt. And yeah, it's just got this really neat clear purple thing going on with some silver highlights, which very much reminds me of the original Beast Wars Megatron toy with the black, purple, and silver. And they painted his face to really show off the whole knight's helmet motif that he's got going on under there. And a lot of people have said that it's supposed to be a reference to uh, Beast Wars Megatron scanning his alt mode since Skelivore slash Pelotrex do turn into a skeletal T-Rex. That could be what it's going for. I don't know. I highly doubt the character will show up actually in the TV series because none of the pack and partners have shown up from these spoiler packs, right? We never got Rung. We never got the Battle Master with Nemesis Prime. So we're probably not getting this guy either. But I'll be happy to be wrong. All right, so yeah, that's everything as far as toys are concerned in here. And then, of course, we get our instructions. I know I'm talking a lot, but it's been a while. I've missed you guys. I'm talking your ears off. All right, so here's the instructions. Luckily, they have been updated to demonstrate Megatron's accessories. Oh, yeah, he's supposed to have a an AllSpark somewhere, right? I don't see it. Did they get rid of the AllSpark? I don't know. I'll have to look for it. Pretty sure he has an AllSpark. But they show you how to attach the bandolier to his body. And shows you how to combine his weapons. And then we just get straight to the transformation including how to attach the bandolier to the tank mode. So that's really cool. They came up with a way to make this work in both of his modes. And then on the back, we get Skelivore's transformation to the T-Rex mode. I don't know if Skelivore is male or female. And then we also get the transformation for the different, like, weaponizer type modes or fossilizer modes, including showing them actually being shown off with Megatron. Hey, let's see. there's the old spark piece. I wonder where it's hiding. It's around here somewhere. It's packaged somewhere here. Maybe it's maybe it's inside this. We'll find out. So very cool. Nice detailed instructions. I like that they didn't, you know, skip anything. Showed you everything you need to see for this. All right, so now let's go ahead and focus on those spoilers. All right, so we're back to our top little insert here with our spoiler text. So if you don't want to know anything about what happens in the show, you know, now's the time to tune ahead a minute or two, because um, I'm going to read this off to you. So right here, this very top one, it says, With the Matrix in hand, I can win the AllSpark and use it to reshape Cybertron in my image. So that's obviously Megatron speaking there, and personally I think it's a really lame spoiler, like an absolute non-spoiler, because... I mean, yeah, I mean, we we know he obviously wants to use the Matrix to get the AllSpark back. Like, that, I don't know why that would be a surprise to anybody. He took it, and he wants the AllSpark. Like, all right. So, pretty lame spoiler, I gotta say. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't call that a spoiler. And then, the bottom one's a little more intriguing. So it says, take the Matrix, Megatron, then the AllSpark. May it have mercy on you. Now that's more interesting. So that's somebody speaking to Megatron, and they're doing it in a way that seems um, spiteful or cynical, and you know, give it issuing it as like some kind of warning. Um, I don't know who's saying it. Maybe it's Optimus. Uh, I'm not sure, but the implication there is that. I don't know if they're talking about the Matrix or the AllSpark when they say may it have mercy on you. I, I'm leaning toward the Matrix, right, because that's generally depicted as having some limited sentience and it doesn't like to be in the possession of, you know, evil Transformers. Like in the old G1 cartoon when Scourge put it inside him and started, like, warping and twisting him painfully because his body was, you know, made from Unicron. Uh, so I have a feeling they're they're saying, you know, may the Matrix have mercy on you, so... That'll be interesting. I can't wait to see, like, what's going to happen to Megatron while he's in possession of this thing, which is kind of like the antithesis of who he is. So, a little more spoilery, uh, really more of a conjecture than anything. 
So pretty decent spoiler. The first one, really not at all. It's probably the worst of all the spoilers from the three packs, but oh well, I mean, it's, it's something, I guess. So let's go ahead and look at our black Play-Doh now. We got the top open. We're just kind of try to squeeze this out here. If it'll let me, it's probably not going to come easily. The very first spoiler pack, the dough stuff came out very easily. This one and the second one doesn't really want to play ball. It also makes a heck of a mess on my white backdrop. All right. So really didn't want to come out, but we managed to get to our bag. So I had said earlier that it was going to have Energon cubes. And I uh, misremembered, there are no Energon cubes inside this dough, this Energon gunk stuff. Um, hmm. What we do have is the All Spark that I mentioned that comes in the form of like a little blast effect. It's kind of cool. And then two additional blast effects done in that same matrix blue as the accent on Megatron's weapon there. So very cool, right? You get a little AllSpark, which has like a little small hard point connection. Weird choice. I don't know why they would want to make this object a blast effect. Like why would you attach it to something? Kind of strange, but okay. I would prefer to have had like a little five mil poster nub sticking out so he can hold it in his fist. But then you get the cool blast effects, which will look very good on the end of his cannon, especially that one. So I can't wait to unseal those and play with them. Here's a quick little zoomed out shot of all three of the spoiler pack boxes, just so you can kind of see how they compare to each other stylistically. And you can see a lot of it's the same, right? There's a lot of the same patterning for the ammo box details, even the little battle damage with the Energon showing through. Biggest differences are the colors and the fact that our new one here has all those vines and stuff, you know, growing around it. So pretty neat if you actually keep boxes. I don't usually, but these are unique enough that I've held onto them, at least for now. Um, so I like it. I think it's a really neat little set of uh, collectible display items there. All right, now moving to the toys themselves. First thing we're gonna look at is Megatron's tank mode. So if you've seen Siege Megatron before, you know what to expect here. Nothing new, nothing fancy. Just same old, very alien, Kind of H tank. Still has a fully rotating turret, which is nice. Biggest difference now, like I said, you got this like blue glowing effect inside of the cannon, vice a red one, which again I think is just supposed to symbolize like him teeming with Matrix energy, which is a nice touch, right? Uh, it kind of adds to the overall package of this guy. Uh, so yeah, I mean, nothing fancy. I will say that this wheel right here doesn't turn very well. That's probably just my copy. It kind of sticks. The others are fine. He's still playing peekaboo with you. So, yeah, you just get your tank mode for all of its pros and cons. Now, this release wouldn't be anything special without its accessories. So here we get the Matrix Bandolier, which is an all-new piece. And my camera does not want to focus. Hmm, that's really odd. It won't let me get any closer than that. Not sure what's going on with my camera. Maybe a software bug for an update. But yeah, you can see it's all just the soft gray plastic with the matrix itself, mostly painted, except for the back here. And the way this hooks onto his tank mode, you want it with the matrix going like long ways across here. You got these little hook things and the top hooks we're going to go in the tops of these little grooves here, where his arms connect to his shoulders. And they're not going to stay in place very well until you get some tension on them. So for now, just kind of hook one in there. And then the bottom straps are going to go right... Where's it at? Right in here, if you can believe that. So they're just going to kind of hook in there, like so if they'll cooperate. There we go. The other one here. Again, if it will cooperate. 
this takes some getting used to. They will fit, but you really, really gotta play with them a little bit to make it all work. There we go. All right, you probably saw some time skips there, but I don't want to bore you with me struggling to get this on. It gets easier with practice, I promise. So there you go. Stays on kind of well. Uh, not as well as the robot mode, but you'll see that later. Now, as far as the blast effects, I was wrong in thinking that our blue pieces here could actually be attached to the cannon end because just like the AllSpark, they have no little post on the bottom. Just little hard point holes. So that's really disappointing. I can't believe he can't like fire one of these out of his cannon, right? Shooting matrix uh, energy, but oh well. So the best thing you do is just kind of connect them to hard points. Uh, for the tank, it'll be kind of on the shins here, the best spot. Kind of get them on there to where they fit best, like so. And then your all spark. I don't know why this thing doesn't want to focus. You can see it's kind of shaped like a, what do they call that, a 12-sided die. I know there's a word for it. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I would just put that up here. I mean, looks silly. Again, it's just being attached to him. Doesn't make sense. Don't know what the thinking was, but at least it's got somewhere to go. So, yeah, he looks a little more cool now, a little more impressive and decked out. And he's, you know, got more stuff going on. Now, why he has blue explosions coming off of him, I'm not really sure. I mean, they could have been cast in anything other than blue, right? There's no other uh, clear blue plastic with which they share a mold. So, my only guess is this must, this must be like Matrix energy exploding out of him, which would kind of go in line with the whole spoiler, right? Of like, you know, may the Matrix have mercy on you, because... Maybe, you know, it starts overwhelming his systems and, you know, energy starts kind of bursting out of him, right? Too much of a power overload. I, I have a feeling that's what's supposed to be happening here. And I think it looks cool. I think the kind of brighter, more metallic colors here just kind of help break things up a little bit. So he's not just more of the same old, same old Megatron tank. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice touch and helps him stand out from the other releases. Speaking of other releases, here is the first wave uh, Netflix Megatron toy and you can see these things are nigh identical very little difference between them the only one that's again noticeable aside from the obvious accessories right here inside of the cannon this is just red which doesn't really even look like it glows so much it's just red highlights where here you get a much more metallic you know kind of shiny almost glowy blue so yeah that's really the only major difference I do also notice, and you may not be able to see it on the camera, that the new toy, its colors, the one that it, that it shares with this one, most of them seem to be slightly lighter, like your grays and silvers, than the first wave one. However, your red stripings, like here and over here, they're actually a little bit darker on the new release. So, I don't know if that was intentional or not, or just... You know, them trying to recreate the same plastic colors with different batches and it coming out a little different. I know I saw that with the, uh, was it the Battle Squad Micromasters between Siege and Earthrise. They were supposed to be the same release, but there were some slight color differences. So I think it's more of a case of that. Uh, either way, I mean, they both look pretty cool. Obviously, the one with more accessories is going to look a bit more impressive right now. But as far as just the tanks themselves pared down... The differences are so small that I think either one is just as good as the other. Okay, next up we get our look at Skelivore in its beast mode, which is a skeletal Tyrannosaurus. And you can see the Beast Wars Megatron motif is very strong here. I mean, like I said, purple with some black and silver. It, it, it's got to be a reference to the character, or at the very least, the bones that it scans when the Predacons are trying to get new alt modes. Like, I can see that, right? This thing's like laying a rock, and the purple's just kind of the glow of the scanner passing over it, even though I think, I think the scanner was actually, like, bluish-green, but, yeah, whatever. Uh, either way, it looks really cool. It just, I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right, as a, a fossil, as a skeletal dinosaur, to be just clear purple, Unless it, you know, in the process of fossilizing became some kind of, like, amethyst crystal. 
But nonetheless, it looks really great. The inside of the mouth is painted black, which is cool. Whereas the teeth are painted silver. You get some silver spikes on the top of the head, compliments of the robot head. And then you get a really cool silver gradient on like the underside of the tail, the underbelly or like wishbone looking thing. Some silver spikes here with the uh, Predacon symbol. And overall, like the mixing of colors, be it clear purple, solid purple, black, it all looks really good. Like, again, it doesn't look realistic at all, but it just looks really, really cool. And very much reminds me of some of the upcoming fossilizers, like Tricranium, right? Where it's just radical, bright colors that seem to invoke more of an elemental motif than an actual bone motif. So I dig it for what it is. Doesn't make any sense, but it's crazy, awesome looking. I'm okay with this. And you know, the tolerances and everything are just as good as they were on uh, Paleotrex. Ball joints are nice and tight on the shoulders there. Everything moves the way it should. Now, one thing I will say, uh, you know, as you already noticed, mostly clear plastic here. So I'll always give that warning with the clear plastic, be very careful. The stuff is brittle and will get more brittle with age. And you can see there are a lot of points on this toy, like here, where there's a metal pin running through that clear plastic, usually connecting to a solid plastic. And that is a common failure point for like clear plastic transformers is that pin. Because as you're you know trying to rotate stuff, especially if it's hard to move, you put a lot of stress on that and eventually it could just crack and give. That's what happened to the uh, helmet of my Beast Machines uh, Optimus Primal back in the day. Just, you know, by moving his helmet back and forth constantly, eventually I just cracked the thing and it was very, very sad. Here is the mold mate and original use of the mold, Paleotrex, done up in a much more fossilized stone coloration. And both of them look very cool in their own right. You know, this one looks cool as a realistic dinosaur fossil. And this guy just looks cool as a shiny purple thing. So they're both doing their own thing. Uh, there's one more use to this mold coming and that's transmutate, which is uh, still a baffling decision to me that they decided to make transmutate a skeleton dinosaur thing. I mean, I don't know. I It's pretty dissatisfying to me, but I also own like the Build-A-Figure from back in the day. So maybe I'm a little spoiled there. I know a lot of people don't have it and would like an excuse to get the character in some way. So there's that. Uh, it's just weird that they chose that mold to make that character, especially since we already had a, a you know, read echo coming, right? Typically they want to get at least two uses at each mold. We already had one lined up. We got one for uh, Ractonite. We got one for Vertebrake. Uh, the only one that I don't know of with any, you know, upcoming read echoes is Wingfinger, but Wingfinger himself was just revealed recently. So I don't know. Hopefully we get a Decepticon counter to uh, wing fingers so we can get like two full fossilizer combiners. Okay, we're going to move back to Megatron now to cover his robot mode. So again, standard Siege Megatron robot mode. Got some pretty heavy metallic paint going on, some heavy battle damage, particularly here on the pelvic region. And then he's got the painted on battle damage on the chest, which are two like claw marks, and then what look like two bullet holes or punctures which uh, I think that's supposed to represent the punctures he gets like in the uh, chapter two of the show, maybe, I'm not sure. And overall, he looks really cool. And I think the slightly lighter shades of silver serve him well here compared to the first wave version. It's just a little easier to make out the details and a little closer in hue to what you normally think of as Megatron. Uh, and again, I still really prefer that metallic look over like the very flat colors used for the Earthrise version, the initial Siege version. It's just, I don't know, makes him look too cartoony. You know, he doesn't look like a serious threat, a big hulking metal monster that he is. So I prefer this take. And everyone's got their own opinions, but I'm Netflix all the way for this guy. Now his tolerances are interesting. Uh, some things I notice is all of his joints are just pretty tight. Not too tight, but in a way to where it feels like maybe they spruced him up a bit which does kind of track because with the Wave 3 Deluxes that we saw, um, what, a month, couple months ago now, um, they all seem to have their tolerances reworked to be tighter too, sometimes a little too tight. Uh, so he seems to follow that trend. So I imagine the rest of the Wave will do the same thing. 
Uh, so that's always good. I also noticed that his fists kind of lock in place a bit compared to you know, all the other versions of this. So when you get them here, there's kind of like a soft stop where you push it in a little further and it kind of just really pushes up against the plastic here and really holds it in place, which is great because then you don't get a floppy wrist when he's holding a lot of weight like his sword, which that's a common failure point on my Megatrons is right here, the hand that holds a sword tends to just do this with the weight. So I'm happy that that is seemingly fixed. Either that or I just got a good copy. I also noticed that the common problem with the Siege Megatron is you always got the one ankle that won't lock into place for tank mode, right? So this one usually locks into place like a soft lock and normally this one, it won't do it. Now it still takes a little bit of finagling, but this time you do it right. Now I won't be able to do it right because you're watching. <laughs> I'm only invisible and no one's looking. Maybe I gotta bend the foot the right way. There you go. This will actually pop into place. It'll stay there too. So that's cool. His uh, ankle lock actually works. Again, I don't know if I just got lucky with my copy or if that's another thing they fixed. And you just wanna like, kinda of push up there to unlock it because it's a little tight. So yeah, overall, I'd say this is the best version yet, right? He's got the superior color scheme of the first wave Netflix toy and he's got really, really great tolerances. All right, here's a quick comparison with the Wave 1 Megatron, who's on the right here. Now, the uh, whole Telltale Cannon Glow thing isn't really noticeable here because those details are kind of covered up by the blade of the sword. But your big giveaway is the battle damage on the chest. So this is the original battle damage, which just looks like almost like tally marks, right? Little scratches here and there. And then here you get like your deep cuts and your puncture wounds. So quickest way to tell them apart. Other than that, everything's more or less the same. Even the Decepticon logos on the chest have the same weathering effect. So yeah, uh, the paint here, same pattern, though the battle damage silver does seem to be a little more heavily applied here. Kind of comes in a little thicker with a little bit more spray to it. Uh, yeah, not huge differences, right? So if you're just comparing the Megatrons themselves, either one is just as good as the other, in my opinion, right? There's not enough differences between the two to warrant a double purchase, which is why I'm kind of salty about the figure choice for this whole spoiler pack. Like, it's one thing with Ultra Magnus where they gave us a character that was already released in the main line, but in this case, they're giving us a character that was already released in this line with a barely changed deco, so... It's a bit hard to stomach it, I'm not gonna lie. I really would have preferred pretty much any other character choice or, you know, anyone that isn't also just a rehash of an existing Netflix toy. Um, so it is what it is, you know, you're gonna feel a little cheated by this if you already have the Wave 1 version. And unfortunately, if you skip out on one, you're missing something. Right, this guy comes with his own fossilizer, and he also comes with his crazy accessories. And this one came with two battle masters, one of which completed the pairing with uh, crosshairs. So, it, it's a tough one, right? You, you kind of have to double dip on this toy to get everything. So, whether or not it's worth it to you, you know, it's going to be entirely subjective. Um, I do slightly prefer the lighter colors on this guy, though. Most people probably won't even notice the difference, so I'd say they're pretty interchangeable. Focusing back to just our Megatron, our new one, let's go ahead and attach his accessories in this mode. So the bandolier goes on again, but it goes on different points. So now the top hooks go here, these little crevices there, and then the bottom ones go into this gap right here behind his big chest plate. And this one, Still kind of tricky to get on, but it does stay on better than the alt mode configuration. Mainly because it's a tighter fit. So a little harder to stretch everything out where it needs to go. But once you get it on there, so you got it hooked in the shoulders. Keep some pressure on there to keep it from flopping off. Bring this around, hook it behind the chest like so, or I got it there. Let's try to get this one on without pulling anything off. And there we go. All right, and that looks pretty good, huh? 
Very, very Rambo-esque. I like it. All right, we can take our AllSpark accessory and let's attach it here again to the shoulder because it's just kind of a nice place to store it. Plus, that's what the instructions say to do. So we got that there. And then you can always put his blast effects on his shins again. Um, <laughs> weird. It's it's weird. I Unfortunately, the way his hard points work out, there's not a really great dynamic looking place to stick these. So they're going on his legs. And because of clearance issues or slight clearance issues, they don't like to stay on very tightly either. So you may have them flopping off like you just saw mine do. All right, so overall still looks very cool. It's got a lot going on. Um, I think the execution for the blast effects is not great. Again, I wish they could have maybe modified these or just used different blast effect pieces so you could actually plug something into his cannon. I think it's a major missed opportunity. In fact, what would be really cool is if we could have one that goes on this side, like the longer one than one that goes on this side, right, to show kind of the uh, energy put being like pulled through and then expelled, but whatever. Is what it is. Um, the All Spark again, great accessory. Weird use. The bandolier is really the best thing you get out of this, and it looks kind of silly in tank mode. Like, why is it there? But here in his robot mode, it's really serving its purpose, and I think it just looks really great. Helps him stand out as a unique toy amongst all of his mold mates, of which there are quite a few. So yeah, uh, as far as the Megatron itself, I'm pretty happy with it overall even if the execution can leave a bit to be desired. Okay, now we have Skelivor broken down so we can place it in its different fossilizer slash weaponizer configurations. Now you'll notice I'm not showing transformations in this review. Uh, typically with read echoes, I, I don't. So if you want to see those, make sure to check out the original Siege Megatron review and the Paleotrex review if you want those step-by-steps. All right, the first thing we're doing for our first weaponizer mode is we're taking these little rib cage bits here, taking your little nubs like so. You want to position them right on top like this. That, like this. And you're going to take your dino feet, plug them in here. So, get them all clawified. This, that's going to make your claw arm backpack thing. Then we're going to reassemble the tail and little wishbone section here. Like this. Put this on there. So you're just keeping it straight and it becomes like a big old battle axe. So that's pretty cool. And then, we need a volunteer, so naturally we're going to use Megatron. And I've gone and removed most of his accessories, except the bandolier, because it's just really not in the way and it looks cool. Let's bring this up a bit. I need the better angle. All right, so, taking your claw backpack thing, and you're just going to attach it to his back. And because he's got the two ports on his back, it's got to go on either side, so... Rather than in the middle, you just kind of have to pick one. Then we're going to take our big battle axe, plug it into this hand. If it'll go. There we go. So you get that. You're going to attach this to his forearm like a shield. And over here, you're attaching the dino head as some sort of, I don't know, fist weapon type thing. And then the skull mace is going to go in the other hand. And it's a tight fit. Very tight fit. Wow. <laughs> Incredibly tight fit. Jeez. Doesn't want to go in there. All right. So be very wary. Don't push down on it with this because you're putting a lot of stress on that pin right there that's holding the clear plastic on. So if you're going to fight your way in there, do it by actually holding the handle. And I guess that's as far in as that's going to go without much of a fight. So that's a shame. I don't know if it's always like that or just the tolerances on my copy. 
but doesn't really want to go all the way in. So yeah, let's adjust this so you get a full shot of the guy here. And here we go. Here's Megatron all armed up in the first weaponizer configuration. Looking pretty cool. I like the whole claw weapons on the back. I love the battle axe thing. And he's got a cool skull mace that looks like Optimus Primal skull mace. So this is kind of more, I guess, primal looking loadout. No pun intended because of, you know, Optimus Primal, but you know, it just looks more primitive and savage, I guess. It's all melee weapons and stuff. Very cool looking. Plus, I will say that having the Dino Ed here really kind of gives him that Beast Wars Megatron motif. Maybe that's what they're going for, right? Maybe he's supposed to be some sort of reference to his namesake with this. I don't know. I just know it looks cool. Okay, now to do our second weapon configuration. Uh, you're going to leave it mostly the same as the first one. So some changes you're going to make. You're going to remove the dino feet from this little backpack assembly, like so. All right, now we want to rotate these out to the side and then bend them here at this joint. Now, something really bizarre that happens in the instructions here is that the instructions actually tell you to take his blast effects and attach them here on the ends of these cannons, which would make sense, right? You know, they're cannons, blast effects, except there's literally no way to attach them. Like, I think they made the same mistake I did in thinking there was some sort of like five mil post on the bottom of these. But uh, nope, that's, uh, that's not gonna work. That's, they're not gonna go on there. So I, I don't know, that's a really interesting screw up but it's, it's just that. Unless one of you guys are more clever than I am and see some kind of way that this can work. And I can kind of force them to stay on these little nubs here, but they're just pointing out to the side and don't make much sense. So yeah, I don't know. That's really, really weird. Okay, now for those dino feet you removed, you're simply gonna take them, bend them back here. I'm sorry, bend them forward here, and then bend this bit up like that. And you're just making those little platforms that you might remember from the Paleotrex review. That did not work very well for Warpath because his holes are not in a great place for him. We'll see if Megatron fares any better, but I kind of doubt it. These are some of the weakest little booster feet thing I've seen on a weaponizer type toy. All right, and then lastly, you're going to take your battle axe thing and you're going to take your T-Rex head. Fold the T-Rex head all the way in to where this peg goes into the jaw, like so. Then you're going to take this piece here, plug it in and make a sword. And yeah, just like this. Then you're going to take this tail bit, turn it around so you got a blade facing forward. So it becomes a Big old sword. Now, here's where things get a little scary with this. All right, first of all, the shield bit you just leave right there on his forearm. Now, for this sword to work, the mace has to form the handle. And to do that, you gotta get it to run all the way up through his fist upside down, but as I already showed you, it's an incredibly tight fit. Now, the way I managed to get it through here, and you can see it's not even all the way, is by treating this like a screw and like pushing down and turning at the same time. It's really tight and I was really nervous the whole time that I was gonna start putting stress marks on this. Um, so far I've been lucky, no stress marks. Um, I'm probably never doing this configuration again though because I don't want my toy to break. Uh, so if you're having the same issue I have with the tolerances and it's really tight and you really wanna do this, that's what I'd recommend is like push it up through and then just turn it as you push in, probably puts the least amount of stress and you can do it the other way too. So, you know, you can get it to go pretty much all the way down facing upright. Uh, anyway, go ahead. This will hold as is. It'll hold better if this is all the way through, but you know, uh, the instructions tell you to take his little cannon backpack and put it on this side this time. Though I don't think it actually matters. I think it just balances him out a little more. So it's got little cannons there. Now the foot attachments. See, his holes fall kind of 
kind of more in the middle of his feet, so this might balance a little better than Warpath did. Get him on there. I don't think it's going to work very well, but hey, whatever. Oh, it works kind of well. Let's turn him this way. And let's adjust our camera. All right, so you get this, whatever this is. And officially, according to the instructions, you attach the uh, AllSpark in this mode. Doesn't really matter, but they tell you to. Technically, you could attach it in the other weaponizer mode, too. So, yeah, this is what we get. Uh, to me, this one looks really silly. Um, the little dino feet underneath just looks bizarre, especially on a big, bulky character like him. Now, I can see these working, looking like some kind of... Uh, you know, reptilian leg extensions on a, a slimmer character, like a Cheetor. But again, they're kind of hard to get working because they're they're pretty small. They don't bear a lot of weight, really. I don't know. This mode really doesn't work for me. The cannons would be cool if they could actually hold the blast effects. The only thing that looks good about this is the giant sword. But unfortunately, because of this thing's construction, it's a risky maneuver getting that, that handle up in there inside his fist, so... Do it at your own risk. Personally, I'm gonna utilize the other configuration. I, I just think it works better. But if you do like this, you have the option. And as we get towards the end, we now have Skelivore in its robot mode. And honestly, this looks really cool. I love the silver highlights. They really help accentuate the fact that this is indeed a robot. Uh, got the skull mask helmet thing flipped down so you can see that see how nice it looks with the metallic blue shining through the eye sockets there the silver teeth the spikes all that and then of course you can flip it up to reveal a very nicely painted knight-like face it's almost kind of weird that this is a bad guy right because it ends up looking very heroic like some sort of, sort of like dinosaur knight or something uh so kind of a shame they didn't make this guy a uh maximal or at least you know make paleotrex a maximal so one of them is right because yeah we got transmutate coming but uh, i don't know she's she would look weird as part of a combiner these guys would work a little better so yeah, as you can see all the tolerances seem to be in good working order nothing's loose or floppy everything works right uh i i dig it you know i think this looks in my opinion, slightly cooler than Paleotrex, but again, I just like the colors. Here is Paleotrex for comparison, and you can see they just have two very different motifs going on. And the more metallic aspect of Skelivore really contrasts against just the all-bone, all-organic look of Paleotrex. And... Again, I think I like it a little more. I especially, I really love the way that the face came out. Both the actual face and the battle mask. I mean, it just looks great. Here, get a close-up of their heads so you can see those. Right, very different takes. And then we can even drop the helmets again. Just so you can see, right? One looks very natural. Looks like an actual skull. And one looks uh, almost demonic, right? With the way that the... Spikes come off more as like horns coming out of like a purple flesh or purple skin. He's got teeth that, um, what do you call those demons? Like an Oni mask kind of thing going on with the, the fangs that kind of point outwards. I just, I really dig it. Uh, I think he's my preferred version, though I am happy this guy exists. Like, I'm glad we have both because they're both just really, really cool doing what they do. And to me, more fossilizers, more, you know, troop builder type characters, just always better. Now to wrap this up a bit, we get both of our characters out into robot modes. Nice little group shot. Uh, overall, I think this is a very fun little set. Uh, definitely more interesting than the Ultra Magnus one. Maybe not quite as interesting as the Nemesis Prime, because he had a whole lot going on. Um, it does break the trend, right? Typically, you had a leader class figure with a small, like, battle master accessory. In this case, they kind of divvied up the price points differently because you get a $30 Voyager and a $20 Deluxe, giving you about a $50 value, plus all these, you know, accessories. It, it, it works out to be pretty much the same. Uh, so, you know, value-wise, it's fine. Um, again, yet another Siege Megatron does drive me kind of crazy. <laughs> 
and especially now with the knowledge that they're doing yet another Siege Megatron with the premium finish line, which will it will put him more closely in line with how he's supposed to look on the, the CGI show. But me personally, I am more than happy with this guy. I think he looks great. I think he's the best version of the mold to come out so far. Uh, not counting, you know, kind of the more out there stuff like the Combat Hero and the upcoming Shattered Glass. They, they do their own thing. Uh, Skelevor is just really cool. I'm down for more fossilizers. They're just a neat little play pattern that you can army build and create all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, the pictures I've seen online of people building, you know, giant robots out of several of these is just really impressive. And now knowing that there's an official combiner from the three different molds, you know, just adds to the possibilities. Really great. Uh, I love the extra accessories that come with Megatron. I wish that the blast effects were better executed. I actually think, I honestly think Hasbro forgot that these things can't plug into like five mil holes or anything. I really think they forgot, right? I think these were meant to be able to like go in his cannon. And then of course they show that they're supposed to plug into his little like cannon feet things. And they obviously don't. Yellow Spark, great addition. Wish he could hold it instead of wearing it on his shoulder for some reason. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm fairly lukewarm. Uh, is this thing a must buy? Not really. I mean, odds are you probably already have some version of Siege Megs, so I don't know if it's really worth dropping the 60 bucks to get this too. Unless you just really, really want those accessories because they are cool. The Matrix Bandolier is probably the best thing about it. And then Skelivore is a really, really neat fossilizer. And, you know, I think I prefer him over Paleotrex. Not because he's better per se, but just he kind of tickles my fancy more with his particular color scheme. And then I do think this is the best version of, you know, regular Siege Megatron that we have. I think he just very slightly wins out over the Netflix Wave 1 figure because the lighter grays just do him a little more justice. He looks... Less dingy, I suppose. So yeah, this one I, I, I kind of mildly recommend, right? If you're a completionist, if you love fossilizers, cool. Or especially if, you, if you've if you never had a version of Siege Megatron, like this is the one to get. Seriously, if you held out and just none of them really scratched that itch, I would pick this one up. It may not be as screen accurate as the upcoming premium finish one, but it comes with so much more cool stuff, plus the fossilizer and the premium packaging, all that, all that neat stuff. So yeah, um, you know, as with many things, recommended with caveats. As you know, however, that is merely my humble opinion on the set. Now I want to know what you all think of this third and final spoiler pack. Did it live up to your expectations? Are you happy with the figures we got? Are you dissatisfied with one or both of them? As usual, any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. If you want to take a more active role in the channel and take part in special things like member-only live streams or getting to submit questions for a special Q&A. Go ahead and check out that join button there where you can become a member for as little as $1.99 a month. And then we can all kind of become our own little tight knit community and just do some special things together. And, you know, maybe come up with more ideas for just how to make the memberships even more fun for everybody. Anyway, I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Netflix Transformers War for Cybertron Spoiler Pack 3, also known as Megatron Skelivore. And with all that said, I will see you next time.